Hey everybody, I'm Alana Perez, the CJ Nerd, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at conditions inside of Houdini using Python. So, let's take a look at opening the Python shell here, and let's also create a new tool here. This is going to be our conditions, and we're going to do the script, apply, and we can see that we have it up here. And then in the shell, we can see kind of our outputs. So let's take a look at a basic condition. Today is day seven of our Intro to Python and Houdini series. We're going to look at condition statements. And the most simple version of a condition statement is that we're checking if something is true. If it is, it's going to print the statement is true. So here we can accept this oops and then run let's open up this tool i just wanted to apply there we go but it printed out this statement is true because this statement is true it has a true statement now if we were to adjust this and make it if false it is going to not print anything else because an if statement is just checking for true or false and if I apply that and run the condition, you can see that it is not printing out anything because whatever the statement here is, it's returning false. Right now we made it a false statement. Okay, so let's take a look at kind of giving us a little bit more versatility with this condition statement. We are going to start using operators within the conditions to make it a little bit more versatile. And here we're going to have two variables, x and y. x is 5, y is 10. The first operator we want to look at is greater than. So if x is greater than 0, x is a positive number. So let's uh, apply this and run the condition. And we can see that x is positive. Next, let's take a look at the less than operator and here it's going to check if y is less than zero if we apply this and we run the tool we can see it doesn't print out anything because this is false okay so let's take a look at the option of checking to see if a value is less than or equal to. So this is kind of similar to what we were doing a moment ago where we had less than, but we are also now checking to see if it is also potentially equal to. So we can apply this and run the condition and we can see that the value is 10 and it is less than or equal to because it is equal to and that value it turns out to be true you can do the same thing with greater than or equal to so we can check this let's apply and run the condition and you can see that x is greater than or equal to 5. So x is 5, it is equal to, so that would turn out to be true. We can also check for an exact value. So here we're going to check if x is equal to 5, and this will turn out to be true. x is equal to 5. And the catch on this is making sure that you're using the two equal signs and not just a single equal sign. A single equal sign assigns a value to a variable. So here x is equal to 5. So we are assigning that value there. Over here with the double equal sign, we are checking and comparing these two numbers. So we're asking is x equal to 5? And if it is, then it's true. So this double equal sign operator it's a comparison between the two sides that it's checking to see if it is equal to 5. We can also check to see if a value is not equal to something. So here we're checking for y, and we're checking if it is not equal to 5. 
and to do that we do the exclamation mark followed by an equal sign and that will be the not equal to so you can see y is not equal to 5. We can also take a look at using keyword operators so in this case we're looking at the word and so we have a statement on this side and a statement on this side in order for this if statement to be true it needs both sides of this and to be true. So right now we're checking to see if x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0. So here, if we apply that and run it, we can see x and y are positive. Now if we switch one of them and try to do this and we can apply it, we can see that it is not giving us a printed statement because this statement is no longer true. Both sides are not true, so the whole statement as a whole is not true. Now if we needed a single value, so we needed a single statement to be true, we can use the OR operator. So we're checking to see if x is greater than 0 or y is greater to 0. So let's apply this and run the condition. x or y is positive. And then if we change one to the negative, apply and try to run, it still says x or y is positive. If we do both of them being negative and apply and run, we can see that it does not pop up another print statement. And that's because they are both negative which means that this statement is false. And in order for this to be false, both of these statements have to be false. Now let's update this. This is still going to be a keyword operator, but we're going to be using a list. So we have a list of numbers. And here we're using the in keyword operator. And in this case, we're checking to see if the number three is in this list. And if we apply and run this, you can see that 3 is in that list and it prints out true. And then here, we're checking to see if it's not present. Oops, I took over the numbers. There we go. So we're checking to see if x is not in numbers. So here, we are going to go through and check right now we have only have one two three four five it is not part of that list so this will turn out to be true and it says six is not in that list we can use this as a string also and check this and let's create a string so this test check okay so what I want to check to see is if test is in our variable string. So we'll say test is in string. Okay, so let's apply this and check it. So you can see that test is in string. So we can also check if it is in a string. So it doesn't have to necessarily be a list. Here we're checking for a set of characters inside of a list. And if it is, then we can output true or false and do what's inside of it. So that is a way you can kind of use it with strings as well. I use that quite a bit when I'm coding here inside of Houdini. Okay, now let's take a look at structuring a little bit more complex version of a condition. So we're going to look at if, which we've already been doing it, but then we're going to add an else if and an else and see how they work together. So we have a variable of x and let's do the first condition here. We say if x is greater than 0, x is positive. Let's apply and run this condition. And we can see nothing pops up. So this statement is false. Now, we can chain if statements 
with an elif. So here, if this is false, it'll go on to the next elif. And we can have a whole bunch of elifs after that, but it will chain them together. So if at any point one of these turns true, then it will stop and it will jump past whatever other else ifs or else you have inside of your chain. So here we are checking to see if x is greater than zero or if x is less than zero. So let's apply and run this and both of them are false right now so we can see that nothing pops up over here. Then we can do a catch at the end using an else statement. So I'm going to bring in that else statement there and we are going to say if x is greater than zero print x is positive else if x is less than zero we're going to print x is negative and if neither of these are true we're going to use the else statement and print x is zero so we can apply that and run the condition there we go so if we change this variable we do do one and apply and run you can see that it shows that x is positive now if we make a negative number we can do x is negative there we go so that is how you get these to interact with each other and like i said you can add multiple versions of this or multiple elements of this so we can say another else if and we would say that it is not positive positive equal to 10 x is 10. so if we do this the way we had it now it's still going to jump all the way into that else statement or actually it's going to stop here at the negative and then it's not going to actually calculate out any of these so if we wanted to test if it will go all the way down to the else we can apply this and run it and we can see that x is zero now let's say we change this to a value of 10. this is something you have to be careful with because if something is true before it gets to this it's not going to read it so if we apply this and run it we'll see that it shows x is positive but it never triggers this over here because we skip over it because it knows that this is true so it's not going to read any of the other conditions so we need an if statement and this is something else to be careful with because if we apply here and run it we can see that it shows x is positive and x is 10 but let's say we change this to negative 10 and apply and let's run it and you'll see that it says x is negative and x is zero. So it actually triggered this because this statement here was false. And it's not an else if, so it doesn't connect these two statements together with this else statement. So if you needed to check for both, the order of this is important. We can take that here and put this after those things that we want linked together. So we have x, if x is equal to 10, we print that value. So here, let's apply that and run the condition. And we can see that it only prints out the value is negative. Now, if we change this value to be 10, we can see that it will give us the x is positive and x is 10. So the ordering of this is important. You can put as many else ifs as you want, but as soon as you have something else other than an if, else if, or else at this level of indentation within your code, then it is going to break the connection between these elements. Okay, now let's take a look at building a example using some of Houdini's code. So we're going to import the who module and let's create some nodes to work with. Let's create geometry node and jump inside of that and let's create a null node and let's we have three null nodes here. 
Okay, so now that we have that, let's get the selected nodes. And I'm going to convert the nodes to a list just because I like working with lists rather than tuples. So I'm going to get selected nodes, who.selected nodes, selected nodes, list selected nodes. So we're using the function list to change the type of selected nodes that was created here to become a list. And let's just print selected nodes so that we can see what's going on here. Apply and run. And right now we have an empty list, but if we select some nodes and run the tool, we can see that we have a list of each one of these objects that we have selected. So we have the address at each one of them there. All right, so what can we do with this and a condition? So we're just kind of going to go on the same line. We're going to create a condition. And here we can say length of selected nodes is greater than zero. So if it is greater than zero, it's going to print the list of objects that is selected. So we can see now we have the leading string that we have selected nodes and it gives us a list of those nodes. Now let's do an else statement. You're gonna paste that there and basically we're checking else. So if the selection is greater than zero, it's going to give us selected nodes is whatever the selected nodes are. Then if nothing is selected, so basically if the value is not greater than zero, which would mean that there is no selection, it's going to say no nodes are selected. So let's apply this and run this condition. We can see that it shows us no nodes are selected rather than giving us a empty list like we did up here, it's telling us specifically that no loads are selected. So this is kind of a simple structure to be able to output nodes or tell you that you don't have any nodes selected. So if we run this code again, we can see that we get the list of selected nodes. All right. So that is the example we have for Houdini today. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, you might find another playlist that I have useful for Python in Maya. Check out the link in the description down below. It's on my other channel, TD Superheroes. So I hope you found this useful. We'll see you guys in the next video and bye.